13, your dad bought a 56 Ford pickup truck. Yeah. As his as his as his uh, service truck, and uh, where we were, we were only about a quarter of a mile, not even a quarter, maybe an eighth of a mile from the big ballpark in Louisville here, or Moncton on Shadiac Road. And my dad used to sponsor back then baseball. I'm talking, you know, uh, 57 years ago. Uh, baseball was pretty big there, and uh, so my dad had uh, was a sponsor there, and he used to take the truck and he dragged the field. Once or twice a week. Jeez. Like drag. Yeah, he would drag the field with a big drag behind it just to, you know, make smooth it nice it. and smooth. And <laughs> so when I was 13, he got tired of doing that. So he would bring the truck down and, and then he I, would start it up and hook the drag on and I'd drag the field. Right on. And uh, so anyway, that's that's where I first drove that, that 56. And it was a V8, three on the three speed on the on the column. And uh, my cousin that was working for my dad, uh, they were fueling a car one day and, and they could hear me going around because that's how close the, the service station was, just the other side of the hill. Right. And uh, my dad told Jim, he said, I better go check on him. He says, sounds to me like he's going pretty fast. So, so he went down to the top of the hill and he looked and he could see me going. And he never came down to talk to me, but he went back to Jim. He said, Jim, he said, I'm not telling you a word of lie. He says, the drag is alongside the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I got when I got back uh, when I got back at the end of the day, I'd leave the truck there and walk back up the hill. He'd go right. get it. So when I got when I got back to the station that day, my dad said there is not going to be too many bumps in the field tonight. <laughs> yeah. so, so that that was my introduction to the. Uh, to so the, that was so and so you've carried that with you until. Yeah. So when yeah. did you say you got it from El, the, this fifty six from Alabama? I picked it up in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yeah. In Gulf Shores, Alabama. Which year though? Uh, that would have been, uh, 2000, uh, 2014, I think it was. And for the first year, we, for the first year we kept it in Florida and then I decided that it had good bones. Uh, so was it a hot rod? Like, was it, it was, yeah, it had height, height front end on it, had a 302 in it and, uh, you know, a few things like that. But it, I mean, it, it was just a amateur built. Right. And an older fellow owned it. He was probably in his late seventies, and uh, but the bones were there. The cab was just perfect, and uh, so uh, so when I uh, when we came home that spring, I decided to bring it home, and I was just going to do a few different things to it, and then one thing led to another. We decided to uh, I start when I took it apart. There was no stopping, right? And uh, we even uh, were going to put the new design heights front end on it, and that was all brought in, and. Uh, and we started working on the chassis doing that. And then I thought, no, when I looked at the Art Morrison chassis and I've seen Art Morrison had come out with a chassis for the 56, so oh, okay. I ordered in the Art Morrison chassis. So that's what I was going to ask you because the, I can't tell from the pictures, but it's not the original. No, no, it's an Art Morrison chassis, chassis underneath. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, uh, I sold the other chassis to Andy McDonald. Okay. There's no Andy there. He's got a bunch of cars and stuff. And, uh, I just wanted something quality because I figured I'd hang on to this one, and right. the old chassis was the old chassis, right? Like, yeah, right. Right. you can put as much. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's like still home. Good. You gotta have to have the foundation, and I'm yeah. a strong believer of Morrison products. I love them, absolutely love them. So, and uh, so that's that's how it got to be, and one thing led to another, and we uh, we uh, cut all the vents out of the sides of it, and vent up on the cowl, and we filled all that in, and. Uh, we panned the hood. Uh, Cliff, Cliff and I panned the hood. Uh, we basically sliced her down the center, and we stood back and probably took probably at least two or three hours looking at it up here, down there, until we found that sweet spot. Right, it was a place where you don't want to go too far. Right, right. So right. we, uh, I think yeah, we got it. So what's so just for the for the what's Cliff's last name again? Coombs. Coombs, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cliff Coombs. So Cliff was a Cliff was like the chief fabricator on it. He did uh, most of the fabrication. And then uh, Leon did all the body massaging and getting the gaps and, uh, you know, the paint and everything. That was that was all Leon's doing. And I mean, that thing, that truck is absolutely laser straight. And that's, that's what I wanted. So, so uh, Leon spared no, you know. Not, he no didn't. Time. He didn't. Uh, he didn't waste any of his talents on the uh, <laughs> on the on the truck. Very happy with the with the outcome. So other than than smooth. So like you said, it's not chopped. No, it's not channeled. 
No. It's just the pan hood uh, and the all the dents on the side of the cowl and the top of the cowl have been taken away. And uh, we did a little bit of work around the drip edges just to smooth them out, just to make them look a little better and fill them in. Uh, and uh, But besides that, that no, it's, I wanted to keep that classic look. I didn't really want to change too much of the outside of the truck. Right. So, but I wanted the technology, today's technology with the Coyote engine and, you know, with the, uh, with the new technology. So, For sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's, and so that part, that's where the build sheet comes in. Yeah. It's whatever yep. you want to, okay, I can fill that in yep. there. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of, I sort of integrate them. Yeah. Um, so why, why that color of white do you think? Cause usually that's everybody's like, black or cherry or you know like dark cherry or blue or and uh, it was uh when i bought it it was originally white but it was a much whiter white than that and uh it's like my mustang i have a 65 downstairs and uh, uh 65 is white but it's that it's wimbledon white which has got a cream color to it okay and anything from the late 50s and early 60s if it was whiter than that mustang downstairs it wasn't the original color Okay. They, they all had the cream colors to them, so uh, so I just like the, you know the, the the Mustang has a nice look to it just with that cream. And I get a lot of people making comments, "Geez, I love the color of that because it's not." If you go too white, sometimes it gets harsh yeah. on your eyes. Well, I, would, eyes. I mean, it would have flavor. Yeah. yeah. For so uh, so I went to look at uh, Wimbledon white with for the truck, and uh, Leon was going to paint it. And uh, Leon one day came in. He says, "Come on, come with me." So we went up to BMW. And they had a car up there, a uh, mini, okay. uh, with a white. And Leon says, I like this white. And uh, it's called Pepper White. So we got the color swatches out. And uh, and it's so close. When I parked the 56 next to the 65, you can hardly tell, but there's a slight difference. But right. that's the color we went with. Was because Leon recommended that we went with the Pepper White. Oh, cool. And then the wheels, I wanted those types of wheels. So I ordered those in from Foos. Okay. And, uh, and then you said the center caps were... Modified. I, I had the center caps made because the way that the wheels are in the front, the uh, my uh, my front hub, uh, my front the bearing comes out through, like the Foos cap wouldn't stay there anyway, like it, it extrudes through it. That so so that's why we had the caps fabricated from uh, a young fellow down the street here does uh, machining for me, and then I brought them over to uh, to Maritime Hydraulics, and they they. They, they did them. And then I sent everything up to Montreal and had the wheels chrome. Yeah. I even I even had the uh, the windshield moldings front and rear, which are stainless. And they, they're the same. They're, they'd be like a grayish color. I sent them up and we got them chrome too. Chrome as well. So that's why it really, the chrome really comes well, up. And, the, and it's it's a modest amount of chrome too because it's just yeah. the two bumpers. Yeah. The wheels and... And the grill. And the front the grill. The grill was brand new. But I didn't like the quality of the chrome on it, so I sent all that up to Montreal. When I looked at them, I mean, I, it was exactly what it's I wanted. It's you wanted. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. So, but, it, uh, you know, when you get a new project like that, you can't... Well, once you get down that, it's a slippery no, slope, right? No, no, you're already, you're already, <laughs> yeah, you're you're already, already tumbling down the hill anyway. <laughs> right? so. so did you, so did you have a rendering, or was this just... No, a, no. So this was just out of your, just, out of your mind? I just kept telling the guys what I wanted and... Just keep it classic and... Yeah. Yeah. So the air ride, that's, that's air part ride, of the yeah. stance. And yeah, yeah. And we can program it. It's uh, I can do it on my phone too. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. is that with the little dial on the left? The little side? dial on the the little dial on the left is uh, at first when we put the system in, it had a like a like a little dial package there with a little screen, and you could dial everything in. When we set it all up, it uh, it wouldn't take its memory. It wouldn't keep its memory. Okay. So we got a hold of. Uh, uh, we got a hold of uh, air ride technology, so this new one is uh, it's Wi-Fi, okay. and he said you have this other little thing that you just plug in your cigarette lighter, and it sends a Wi-Fi signal out for one, two, or three, the two, okay. three settings, right? And that's that's how simple it is. So anyway, the truck was already done, and I already had that thing installed in the dash. So <laughs> Leon had to come over, and we had to redo that corner of the dash. Because if you have it, you'd would have had a yeah space we space mounted space. it so we had a couple of holes where the screws held it in Jesus and Christ. and uh, so anyway we you, you you could never tell and we did that just before the car show oh no way. probably a week before the car show <laughs> that we plugged that up so why did you pick uh, interiors by Shannon after going to SEMA we, we went to SEMA almost every year and seeing some of the 
quality builds there and seeing some of the interiors. You know, what most people don't realize is the interior is just as important as the outside of the car. Oh, you know, definitely. It, it, well, the judge... Like, as soon as, as soon as you look at the car on the outside, and if you look inside, and it's, you know, like, all your expectations are gone, right? So I drove the, uh, I drove the, my truck and trailer down, brought the 56 down to him, left everything there, and flew <laughs> home. And uh, four months later, I flew back down and picked everything up. And, and sure. Shannon brought me through step by step. He was a... He was a great guy to do business for. I was the furthest customer that he'd ever had. Oh, really? Furthest away, yeah. Well, I want to include, because that's where Frostbite comes from. That's right? where he's the one who nicknamed it Frostbite. Yeah. You know, okay. and I asked him, I said, is that because it's from Canada or it's white? And he's well, sure. he, he <laughs> chuckled. He said, well, I guess both, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, see, all, see all the fab most of the fabrication Cliff did. Most of the body work Leon, uh, did. Leon did. And the interior, uh, Shannon did. But once everything's done, like uh, that's you. I, I I assemble everything. Yeah. Like uh, from then on, when the when the when when the uh, when the truck was torn down, when we tore it down, we built it. And then when we tore it down, the body went to uh, the body went to uh, Leon to do. And uh, and uh, I sent the chassis down to get a powder coat. Once once it came back, I assembled the whole truck. I, I brought the cab down to, because Leon didn't have time to uh, do the buffing, so I brought it down the lane and, and brought all the pieces back and assembled the whole truck. And that's what I enjoy doing, is the assembly.